Hey there, I'm Brittany Smith and welcome to Filmmaker Symposium. Today we're going to talk about how to write multi-dimensional characters. So oftentimes we confuse characterization with true character. Now the, these two distinctions come from a book called Story by Robert McKee, so I highly recommend that book. But in that book he describes characterization as being the outward aspects of a character. So for instance, what they wear, their accent, how they talk, um, their culture, their car they drive, their job, everything. So those are the outward things that develop a character. Now these things are necessary, but if we stop there, then our character is only going to be knee deep. So true character is actually, according to Robert McKee, True character is actually when we present our character with a dilemma and a choice. So it's in the midst of pressure that we actually see true character. So the stronger the pressure, the deeper the character is going to be. Now this actually makes sense because in real life, when you meet someone, let's say you, you meet a really nice person who seems to be normal, and you think, oh, that person's really nice. Well, then later on down the road, you see them under pressure, maybe in a work environment or something like that. And then you realize, oh my goodness, this person has really deep seated issues. Well, that's because their true character is being revealed through the pressures that are put upon them. Now, for instance, in Hunger Games, we are introduced to Katniss and her sister in the beginning, and we're told that they love each other. But we don't know that they love each other until Katniss is presented with a choice when her sister is chosen for the Hunger Games. So she can either let her sister go off and be killed in the Hunger Games, or she can substitute herself and go in her stead. So by this choice and dilemma, we are actually introduced to Katniss on a deeper level. We know that she does love her sister enough to sacrifice her own life. And we see that Katniss is somewhat of a hero in that way because heroes sacrifice themselves. Now with the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, we have more of a negative character with Edmund. He decides that he's willing to betray his family in favor of the queen's or the witch's um, approval. Now when he does this, we're taken to a deeper level with Edmund and we have kind of this resentment with him because we see the, the immensity of his greed and ego. So the choices that a character is presented with is what defines true character. A character may say they love somebody, but we don't know that they love somebody until they are presented with a choice. And it may end up being that when they're presented between their, that person and something else that benefits them, they may choose that thing that benefits them and we see how actually they really don't desire that person. They actually desire themselves. So true character is revealed by choices and desire. So one thing that I've noticed is that when people talk about stories and characters, they often start talking about character dimension. And this word character dimension is kind of thrown around all the time. We talk about um, flat characters as being one dimensional and then really complicated deep characters as being multi-dimensional. So, the thing is, I don't think anything, anyone really knows how to define dimension. We talk about it all the time. It makes us sound kind of smart, but we don't really know what it means. So Robert McKee does give a de definition for multiple dimensions. And he says that multiple dimensions in a character are actually contradictions within the character. So it means that the character is portraying themselves with something, but beneath the surface, there's something else. This is a contradiction, and this is what provides dimension for your character. Now, um, an example of this would be in The Patriot. So Mel Gibson plays the main character in this particular movie, and he presents himself as being not violent and not wanting war, trying to be peaceable, and his sons don't quite understand what's going on here. But he presents himself in that way. Then, when one of his sons is murdered by the antagonist, we see 
the full wrath of Mel Gibson come out and he goes after those British people and he's the most violent man that we've ever seen on television. Maybe not the most violent, but he's a very violent person and he takes it out on the British. This is a contradiction in his character and it draws us in and it actually helps us identify with him because we all have contradictions within our own character. We all present ourselves a certain way, but actually are a different way beneath the surface. Now, one thing we need to be careful about with multiple dimensions is to make sure that our protagonist is the focus of these multiple dimensions. If we start adding these multiple dimensions to sub-characters, we need to make sure that those sub-characters are serving the story. We don't want to just create multiple dimensions for sub-characters just because we want to create multiple dimensions. Because if we create multiple dimensions for our sub-characters, they could actually outshine the protagonist. So you want to make sure that your story is consistent and that it is about the, the protagonist and not about those sub-characters. So one thing that will really help you when you're developing a character is actually being honest about that character. And being honest means drawing out those dark things and drawing out the sin and the yuckiness of that character. Because audiences are smart. They can tell a fake when they see it. We all know that we're selfish and egotistic. And if we develop characters that really don't have any of that going on in their character, then the audience is going to know that you're lying to them. And audiences don't like to be lied to. They want to be able to resonate with a character and to resonate with their struggle. That doesn't mean that our characters can't do anything good. Obviously, Katniss is a wonderful example of a character that is heroic, but she also has weaknesses. We can see that she gets ultra depressed when things are not going the way she thinks it should. And there's various other things that we can see that she struggles with. But we need to make sure that we're honest with our audience. And honestly, as a Christian, I am a Christian, we should be honest with people. I mean, we should not be producing fake characters. And unfortunately, Christian filmmaking does produce a lot of fake characters because we're not honest about um, who we are and that's not being reflected in our writing. Well, that's all I have for today, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and like, and if you have any questions or comments, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to answer them or have a discussion. So I hope to see you next time on Filmmaker Symposium.